You know, third-party risk is probably one of the biggest problems we're seeing out there today in industries. And the reason, if you think about the past year, year and a half, all the major security breaches, they've all been started at a third party. In fact, over 50% are actually starting at a third party. They're having major impact on corporations, very material risks, very material financial impacts that, that are impacting major organizations. In fact, to the point where the National Association of Corporate Directors have stepped in and given guidance to the, the boards of these public companies saying, here are things you need to look at. And one of them they specifically called out is understanding that third party risk. We have spent years and years in my industry building security programs, security programs to protect the assets and the shareholder value within our company. Then over the last decade, we've actually moved to very much outsourcing model, where now more than even half of our IT is outside of our company. So one of the roles of the, the chief security officer is to understand that and begin to manage that risk. Many people talk about insider, insider threat. And the insider is someone that is within your organization, not necessarily an employee. Again, it could be a third party, a contractor. It could be a temp worker. Well, insider threat isn't new. Um, it's been a concept we've dealt with for years because those that know your processes, those that already have overcome one of the barriers in security is physical access, right? They're inside your organization, they know your organization. So the insider remains the, the most significant threat we face today. They're harder to detect, and they'll usually have a bigger dollar value associated with the loss. You've probably heard about advanced persistent threats, or APTs, and, and that's the way the state-sponsored attacks are occurring and many of the organized crime they're attacking companies through what's called an APT attack. It's a process. Well, the first thing they try to do is they try to look like an insider. So once they've gained that access, then they look like an insider because it's hard to detect an insider on your network. So the insider threat's a big one and will continue to be one and one we're working really hard, uh, continue to work really hard on finding the best solution for. So if you're thinking about doing business with a third party vendor, remember it starts at day one. It starts from the time you're doing a request or an RFI, request for information. Start your due diligence on that vendor immediately. Do they have a good reputation in the market? Do they have any breaches that are already known, any legal liens? That's the beginning of the thing. And then the most important part is the next step, and that's the contract itself. When you're thinking about doing business with a third party, your relationship is all driven and guided through the contract. So as you're, you're thinking about that contract, think about specific parameters like the right to audit. Make sure you have that right to audit and you can assign an agent to do that audit for you. You've got the indemnification clauses. You've got the, the right to uh, expect certain controls be in place. And SLAs, if they don't have them in place, or, or service level agreements, how fast will they fix it? if you find they, they are lacking in, a, in a, a, a specific control. So all these things come really up front and making sure you've got that agreement. So a common question I'll get often is, well, if we've outsourced it, are we now responsible for it? You know, how can I be held responsible as I've, I've hired another company to provide this service uh, on my behalf? Well, depending on what industry sector in, the laws are defining who has the responsibility. And you can look that up depending on your regulatory environment. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Your customers have a trusted relationship with you. It's you they put their trust in. You made the decision to outsource that data and give their private consumer data to them. And remember, it's not just PHI or public health information. And, and private data like your credit card and social. We're also dealing with a lot of intellectual property across the U.S. And the biggest threat to the U.S. today is no longer terrorism. I don't know if you knew that. But it's actually now the loss of intellectual property. So if we're moving that intellectual property out and we've provided it to a third party to work on and then that, that data is breached, 
Well, you've, you've had a material harm to the company. You've materially hurt those shareholders that was depending on that R&D as some of their future values. So it's not just consumer data, it's not just health data, which are extremely important. We have to think the big picture. And who's at fault? I, I think it's down, you know, the buck stops here. You need to make sure you do, do your due diligence, do care. Yeah, in the end, lightning can strike anywhere. Anyone can be breached. The question is, what have we done to ensure they have the ability to detect the breach if it does occur? Of course, first protect the data, right? That's the core. Then detect it. And then in the end, how quickly can they react? If you can react the moment a breach occurs, there's almost no loss. It's what we're seeing is it's months and months between a breach and when it's actually detected. And that's where the real damage is done in that length of time.